to be discussing, is Ancestry worth it? How does it compare with some of the other services out there? And what are they doing with their money? I actually asked Krista Cowan to come in and join me for a portion of this video to talk a little bit about why Ancestry did what they did with the Pro Tools and what they do with their money. Why do they charge what they charge? And also, how can you get some better deals on Ancestry? So today, I'm gonna to sit down with you and I'm going to compare Ancestry to the other big companies that are very similar to them. And I'm gonna give you a lot of information about why Ancestry may be worth it or maybe why it's not to you. And you can make up your own decision. Um, I'm also gonna give you some information on how to get Ancestry maybe a little less expensively. So you definitely wanna check that out. So there's three large companies out there that provide records for us and allow us to build trees. There's a couple of smaller companies that also are entering the market, but they aren't even close to the size of these three. In addition, there's Family Search, which is free with an account. So Family Search has a lot of records as well. So if you're wanting to save money, you can go there and you can build into that tree, but that's a global tree and you won't own that tree. So what are your options? You can build a tree on one of these three sites or you can build a tree on your computer. The, that may be a cheaper way for you to go. And a lot of people in my video last week were like, these new Pro Tools I can do with my genealogy software, so why would I pay for it? And that's a legitimate reason. Um, however, those genealogy softwares and some of them actually direct you to sites like Ancestry and Find My Past and My Heritage because that's where the records are. And you can't build a tree without substantiating it with facts, which are your sources. So while building your own tree on Roots Magic or Family Tree Maker or Legacy Tree or any of the other genealogy programs is a great option. And those programs give you a lot of really cool tools like printing charts and things that Ancestry is charging on Pro Tools. Um, however, they still need the sources. And so, you're going to have to go to one of these sites really to do solid research and get your records. So what's your best bet? I got to tell you, after doing some research today and really looking into the costs of these three sites, I was surprised they weren't as different as I thought they were. Now I'm going to tell you this stuff from US dollar perspectives and what they charge here in the United States. It can vary in different countries. And I'm also going to give you the annual cost because that's an easier way to compare. They all offer you a discount if you pay annually rather than month to month or for a three or six month subscription, depending on what they offer. The first site that I want to talk about is Find My Past. Find My Past is really a great site for British records. They do have some North American records. So Find My Past has three basic membership levels. The first is the essential, the second is ultimate, and the third is premium. The essential is basically the US and UK records and it's $160 a year. The ultimate is the US and UK records without the 1921 census and that's $220 a year. And then the premium is US and UK with the 1921 census for $300 a year. You can build a tree on Find My Past and it'll look like this and the person or profile page looks like this. There's some things I like about Find My Past. I kind of like how their profile page works. It's not a bad place to go. Now the next one is MyHeritage. MyHeritage is based in Israel. If you are of Jewish descent, they may have records that you're not getting elsewhere and they have a lot of European records. What do I like about MyHeritage? They have some really cool photo tools. They've got some great DNA stuff, particularly if you're Jewish, but their tree is a little bit different. Their tree looks like this and a profile page looks like this. I have a harder time navigating this tree. You can create a tree on MyHeritage with 250 people on it for free. The premium level is really just basic DNA stuff, all right? And that's $120 a year. Now they offer some discounted rates for your first year, but then it bounces up to this cost. The premium plus includes a tree consistency checker, which is, and the DNA stuff, which is kind of like Ancestry's fact checker. Okay, but there's no records in the premium plus, which is $209 a year. The records are in the data, which is $189 a year, the data plan, but that doesn't give you the DNA stuff or the fact checker. So, but you do have access to their just under 20 billion historical records, all right? And then the complete includes all of the DNA and all of the records, and that's $299 a year. 
All right, now let's move into Ancestry. Ancestry has three plans. They do have the add-on now of the Pro Tools, but they have three basic plans. The three plans are a U.S. Discovery plan, which is 119 for six months or $229 a year. And that is all of the U.S. records on Ancestry. The World Explorer is $169 for six months or $319 a year in the United States. At least these are the numbers that I'm seeing when I check my computer today, okay? I think they may vary in different countries and different places, but that's what I'm finding, all right? And the World Explorer includes all of the U.S. records and international records. And then All Access is $259 for six months or $479 a year. So that gives you not only the World Explorer and the U.S. Discovery, it gives you newspapers.com access, including the Publisher Extra package and Fold3, which is a great site for military records. Now, newspapers.com is a great newspaper website. There are some others out there, but newspapers.com isn't cheap if you buy it separately. Newspapers.com is about $150 a year for that publisher's extra package. They have one that's less expensive, but it doesn't have all the papers in it. And then Fold3 is a great military site, but it is $80 a year. And so when you add those together, you're really getting a pretty good deal by getting the all access package. And you'll note on this slide, it says that you can have a family plan or four additional accounts with all access. Now you'll see when I talk to Krista that that's kind of in flux, all right? So I'm gonna hold that thought on the family plan. Now here are all three side by side, and you can see that they're really not as different as you might have thought. And when you think about how much you're spending, if you have a Netflix subscription, you're paying $180 for the standard or $276 for the premium per year. Where do you want to put your money? I don't know, you know, and a lot of people that replied to my previous video are on a fixed income and they can't afford Ancestry. So what do you do? What are some of your options, all right? Before I go into some cost-saving options, I wanna transfer over to my interview with Krista. All right, so tell me more about Ancestry and kind of your model and how Ancestry works. Because I think a lot of people don't really understand what drives the company. It's a for-profit business. But anyway, give us the scoop. Yeah, so, you know, I think uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is how much is available for free on Ancestry. So since Ancestry launched the Family Tree Service, Back in about 2004, it was right about the time I started working here, which is how I how I gauge that. Um, that tree building service has been available for free. So you do not have to have a subscription to build a tree. You don't have to have a subscription to store your tree on Ancestry. Um, you don't have to have a subscription to share your tree. And then we have over a thousand databases of free records as well. So the 1940 census, 1950 census, 1880 census are just a few of those records. So there's a lot that you can do on Ancestry for free and literally millions of people take advantage of that free service. Now, our subscription model is all based on content or historical records. So Ancestry pours millions of dollars every year into acquiring and digitizing and indexing and publishing and hosting historical records from around the world. At the beginning of 2020, uh, 2023, we had 40 billion records from 80 countries around the world. And this year, with some of the advancements in technology that we've been able to fund, including some really amazing advancements in like AI and handwriting recognition, um, we've been able to publish about 15 billion additional records to the site just this year. So that's what your subscription's paying for. Whether you're accessing uh, the US subscription, for example, or the global subscription, or that top tier subscription, which is called all access. All access just means you have access to all of the content on Ancestry, as well as all of the content on Fold3 and newspapers.com. So traditionally, or to date, that's kind of been the subscription model. And we recognize that we're changing things up just a little bit now uh, with some of the new features and new tools uh, and new subscription add-on packages. But that's kind of been what we've done so far. 
You with me? So that's just huge because really our research is dependent on good records, right? Solid research means good records. And that's one of the things that I appreciate you talking about because I think a lot of people don't know that. Well, tell me a little bit more about the pro package and why you guys decided to do it the way that you did it. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that we've kind of struggled with, because as a for-profit company, right, we have budgets just like every, you know, household in America, right? I have a budget for my own personal finances. Companies have budgets. And so much of our money is funneled into that content experience um, and that whole pipeline of, of production that I just mentioned um, that we really wanted to find a way to funnel some additional funds into developing some more tools. Users are constantly giving us feedback about things they want. The number one request from our users is was the ability to search their own trees by location. And it seems like it should be such a simple thing, but it does require, you know, some testing, it requires UX design, it requires development, a product manager has to follow the process. Like there's teams involved in getting that work done. And so we just took a list of some of those top requests and we decided, you know what, what if we could just create a little add-on package and the money that is needed to develop and support that could be paid for from the people who actually just want to use those tools. So instead of yeah. muddying the message of the content subscription and raising those prices to cover that, or instead of just making it free, like all the other tools have been historically, we just created this Pro Tools package as an add-on for anybody who has a current content subscription and just wants a little extra access to some of these additional tools. So that was kind of the thinking behind that. As far as the DNA Plus package, that's again, a new subscription. Um, Ancestry offered all of the DNA tools um, were included for free um, as part of the purchase of the kit. And again, that's kind of not a long-term sustainable business model. There are costs associated with every new match that comes in and has you know, tens of thousands of other matches and database tables that have to be stored and um, facilitating the messaging and um, the innovation that the DNA team has undertaken with the new side view features, for example. Um, that was just this incredible work, but also this really cool discoveries that people are able to make. Yeah. Um, and so we, we released that to the public for free first with a beta tag on it, just to let people know that we were testing this, you know, to kind of work through it, to see if people were interested in it, um, and then decided to make that a subscription. So if you have any Ancestry subscription, you get the DNA tools for free. But if you have no subscription, if all you've ever done is purchased or been gifted a DNA kit, then that is a subscription to access some of those more advanced DNA uh, features. The paternal maternal is there even if you don't have that add-on subscription? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that side view, parent one, yeah. parent two. Yeah, yeah, that is only available if you have some level of subscription. So, so any one of your three subscriptions will work yes. to have those records. Oh, well, yep. cool. I didn't know yep. that. Okay, but a lot of people have been saying too that, um, you know, you have this DNA stuff and then you took it away and put it behind a paywall. And they're worried that you're going to take away other things that you have and put it behind the Pro Tools paywall. Can you address that at all? Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny because here's what, we just launched Pro Tools last week. Right. And one of the things people said is, well, why didn't you give us a free preview of this? before you put it behind a paywall. And then on the other side, we have people saying, why did you give us a free preview of this? And now you put it behind a paywall. So sometimes I feel like we can't win. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of different membership levels that in my research to prep for this video, I discovered that I didn't know existed. Like if you were a student, or if you are a member of AARP, would you please go over and the family memberships? Those are three things that I think are big. And I don't think a lot of people know about them. And I'd love to hear from you about kind of how those work. And could you kind of fill us in on those ones? Yeah, absolutely. So Ancestry does have a student discount. So for uh, particularly that's for university students. So if you're enrolled in any higher education um, in the, I believe it's available in the US, Canada, the UK and Australia. So our English speaking markets primarily right now. Um, and that's been kind of rolling out over the course of the last three years or so. 
Um, the pricing is a little different in every market, so I don't want to just blurt that pricing out because I'm not exactly sure what it is in every market, but um, but it is greatly reduced. You do have to go through a verification process with student ID uh, to prove your student status and all of that. So that's for students. Um, the AARP membership, of course, is for those at the other end of the life spectrum, right? So for those here in the U.S. who are members of the American Association of Retired Persons, there is a discount available, and I think it's pretty significant, like 30 percent um, on an annual membership. So it's not applicable if you're just paying month to month or if you want to buy six months at a time. I think you have to buy a full year at a time, um, but I think it is available for any of the package levels, country, world, or all access. Tell me more about the family plan, because that's one that a lot of people don't know about. And I'm pretty psyched about the family plan. And I think more people need to know about it. So family plan is still fairly new-ish, right? So we started testing it earlier this year. It's still kind of in testing. Um, so it hasn't been rolled out globally yet. And, and not everybody is going to see it all the time. So they kind of turn it on and off at different times, trying to test different things. Uh, but the essential idea, if you see it, is that you can purchase a subscription um, under the family plan. And again, country, global, all access. And then it allows you to share that subscription with four other people. So all five of you will have your own accounts with your own logins. But just one account is kind of the, the head of the family. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other four are like, you know, child accounts. And you can really share it with anybody. Like, um. You know, I've seen people share it with people in their genealogical society or with, you know, a group of cousins that are working together on something. Some people actually do share it in a family with, you know, parents and adult children and however they choose to do that. But the idea is, um, you know, that way either one person can purchase the subscription and then share it with four people or all five of those people can kind of split the cost and and it just gets funneled through that one person. So, but does that mean though, if you share your subscription with everybody else, you're sharing your tree automatically and all of that other stuff? Because I think that would be a concern for some people. Yeah, no, not at all. Every one of you has your own login and your own account. Oh, it's okay. just the subscription that is covering it. So you can still all have your own tests. You can still all have your own trees. Uh, all of that is still the same as, as it is now. Oh, that's terrific. And if you want to share your tree with that group, you would have to manually go in and share your tree like we share trees any other time, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Or there's a new feature on Ancestry called family groups. So you could take those five people and anybody else you wanted, put them in a group uh, with a tree shared to the group. And so instead oh, of okay. having to do it one person at a time, uh, it shares it with that group. So I always tell people that if they can't afford Ancestry, they can go to their local library or a lot of their local libraries. And for sure, the Family Search affiliated libraries or the Family Search libraries to access Ancestry for free. The question that I get that I haven't been able to figure out yet, mostly just because I haven't thought about it when I've been in one and I have my own account. So I don't know how to test this is, okay, so let's say somebody has an account. Let's say they've built a tree and they want the, because the trees are free. We've talked about that, um, but they want to add records and they want to see the records. Can they log into their Ancestry account from a library computer and get into their tree and add the records because they're in the library tree or can they not do that? How does the library access help somebody? Okay, so all of the, the public libraries and then the family search centers that have free ancestry access. Those are what we call ancestry institutions. So you'll actually notice when you're logged into ancestry at a library or a family search center, that the URL is ancestryinstitution.com, not ancestry.com. And that's because it's a special public account because it's loaded on public computers. We wanna make sure that none of your personal private information is compromised. So that's why on those institutional accounts, you cannot send messages to other users. You cannot view or access your own uh, family tree for editing. You can't have DNA results. So all of that kind of personalization is stripped out and it's really just access to those 40, now 55 billion records on the site. So that's the difference between what you're accessing at the library. It's, it's a way to use the research facilities without having to pay for that research level subscription. I would actually strongly discourage people from logging into their own personal accounts on public computers, because okay. I've seen far too often when people just forget to log out 
Um, and then now their computers, you know, their um, tree is open on a public computer to anybody else. So use your personal computer, your personal mobile devices to access or even bring your mobile device with you to the library, log into your personal device, and then use the library computer to, to do that research in the records to kind of help you fill in the blanks on your tree. Okay, well then, but how do you do that though? So like, let's say you're at a library, you found some cool records for somebody in your tree. How how do you then, you, you can look at the picture, right? You can look at the image, mm -hmm. which is always, always, always do that. Um, but how do I then like know, how do I then add that record to my tree if I don't have an account? Or well, I have an account because I have the tree. But if I don't have a current membership, how do I, how can I do that? Is there a way I can do that? Yeah, you can't actually attach the record. You okay. can just manually copy the information from the record into your tree. And of course you can always create your own source citations, right? Okay. So in your tree, you could, you could add a source citation that is the 1950 cent. Well, 1950 is a terrible example because it's free. Use it on your account. <laughs> the 1920 census, right? And you can create a source citation for that so that it exists in your tree. But the actual link to that image, again, that's what that subscription is paying for is the okay. access to those records. Okay. That's good to know. I didn't know that. And I think I actually have some told some people the wrong thing. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, so I would love to chat a little bit more about Pro Tools. I don't want to go over everything that's in my other video because I don't want to waste your time or anybody else's. But I did want to ask you about a couple of things. So if you are currently in your account and you see that little I at the top, that's a little thing that says, hey, you've got a fact here that you may want to check. And then the pop-up will show up and say, hey, are you interested in this? Is that correct? Is that yeah. really the only way to get the Pro Tools subscription option? It's not actually. So there's okay. actually uh, at least two other places. So that's the tree checker. Uh, okay. And it is on the profile page of every person. It's also in your tree view, that little exclamation point. The other entry point for Pro Tools is actually over on the left when you're viewing your tree where you click between horizontal and vertical or pedigree and family view, you'll now see um, the map view. All right, so what about, the one thing that I've had some people talk about is I've been, I encourage them in my video to use the standardized locations so that they mm -hmm. could then have better map results. But I've had some people say the standardized locations aren't working particularly for unincorporated areas in the United States and even some other places in the world. And I, without knowing the specifics of a particular example, don't know if you can even address that, but do you know what I'm talking about? And do you have any thoughts on that? I do know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's kind of long been this um, like bifurcation in the genealogy world about how to handle locations. Yeah. And there's two really clear camps. One camp is always put in the location as it's listed on the record at the time that the event occurred. Um, and then the other camp says, put the, his, put the current location in the location field and then put the historic location in the description or in your source citation or in your notes. I fall firmly in that camp and have long advocated for that for a multitude of reasons. And now we're starting to see some of the reasons why. Yeah. Um, modern mapping technology doesn't know about historic boundaries. And so you have to have a current location in order for the, the map to recognize where that is. And if it can't recognize where that location is, if you haven't used a standardized location, and that doesn't just mean current, it also means you have to include the country name. So for yeah. everybody who stripped USA out of everything because they thought, oh, my tree's only in the US, like it's not gonna know where that place okay. is. That's and good so to it know. tries to resolve it I actually have a few places in my tree. I, I pulled up that map view the first day I got access to Pro Tools and a colleague was looking over my shoulder at my map and she goes, do you really have 900 events in Croatia? And I thought, there's no way that's possible. <laughs> and sure enough, it was a location in my tree in the US that was trying to like normalize itself and it ended up in Croatia. So I've been able to kind of quickly go through and fix those. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, that's really good to know. All right, the other thing that I would really love to do, and I don't see it anywhere, um, the fact checker. What facts mm -hmm. are you checking? Yeah, so besides, we haven't- Besides duplicates. We talked about duplicates. Right, we haven't video. published that list publicly yet because okay. we're only checking a few basic things right now. Okay. But we will be adding facts to the thing, to the fact checker. 
And okay. we will be publishing that list at some point in the new year. So stay tuned. All right. Sounds good. There were a couple of other things that came up that I didn't know about. One particularly was the fan charts different in the Pro Tools. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? And then you had one other thing in mind that I know I didn't cover in my video. Hit me with that one as well. So the fan chart, it's a new view of your tree. And the basic five generation color coded view of that is available to anyone that yeah. has a tree. But... With Pro Tools, we add a sixth and a seventh generation to that fan chart if you want. Okay. And then we also have some settings that allow you to look at different views of that fan chart. It's like a heat map of where you have sources or where you have photos attached or where you have hints. Um, and it kind of shows you that uh, kind of in a, in a heat map format if you're familiar with that. And then there was something more about searching that is new that yeah. I didn't cover in the video. Tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you just so, told me about this and I'm excited about this one because I didn't even know about it. I totally missed yeah, it. Yeah, I've already used it a ton just this weekend. So when you do a search, whether it's from a person in your tree or whether it's a manually crafted search that you type in all the fields, once you search, some of you may have noticed over the last uh, couple of years, we'll show you if you viewed a record before or if it's in a hint or if you've already saved it. Um, you can actually now in Pro Tools, there's a little checkbox and you can just immediately hide everything you've seen before from that set of search results. So it kind of reduces them a little bit, makes them a little easier and quicker to get through when you're looking for something new and you don't even have to scroll past the stuff you've seen before. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So are yeah. there going to be more or is this it? Oh, there's so much more. Um, like I mentioned uh, earlier, Ancestry has just compiled lists of things that customers have asked for in the way of new tools and features. And we've kind of gone through and prioritized that and done some initial user testing. And so, yeah, we've got some, some new things coming in the new year. Um, this is not just a one launch of these things and we're done. Uh, I'm, ex I'm excited to see uh, what comes next and, and what makes the list and in what order. That's great. Thank you so much for coming on and giving me some of the insights that you've given all of us today. I really appreciate it. You're always just a joy to be around. Thanks. Well, thanks. Anytime. <laughs> As Kristen noted, you can have any size tree on Ancestry for free. You just can't look at the pictures of the records that are behind the memberships, okay? Which, like she said, some records are available to everybody, but a lot of them aren't. So that's your hitch, right? You can have your tree, but you can't look at those records. You can't look at the images. And that's really what you want to do a lot of times. So what do you do? Um, if I were somebody that was hitting some financial issues, I would cancel my membership with Ancestry. My tree would be, would be there. I might still work on it and manually input the information like Krista mentioned. Um, maybe go to the libraries and things like that to keep researching. And then when I could afford to, I would get another membership, maybe watch for Black Friday sales or other things. Maybe somebody could gift you a membership. I honestly think the best option is the friends and family. Get some friends together and divide the cost. The other thing that you might want to consider is the Preserve My Tree membership like we talked about. When you do the Preserve My Tree membership, when you go to cancel your Ancestry membership, they're going to ask you if you want to preserve your tree. That doesn't mean that they're going to throw away your tree if you don't do that your tree will stay on Ancestry. It means it will allow you to see the records that you have put into your tree. You're not gonna be able to add new records to the tree, but you're gonna be able to see the ones that you've already added, and that's $5 a month. What if you can't afford the $5 a month for the Preserve My Tree membership? That could be very well be the case. Another option for you would be to use the Family Tree Maker program. The Family Tree Maker program will sync with your tree on Ancestry and download all of the information from your tree onto your computer. Now, another program like Roots Magic can sync with Ancestry, but I'm not sure, in all honesty, that it works the same way. You'd have to check into that. But I can tell you for sure that Family Tree Maker will, and then on your computer, you have the documents that have been saved into your tree which is wonderful. And it's a one and done thing. You pay for Family Tree Maker and then you don't have to pay for it again unless there's an upgrade or something like that. Currently at the time of the production of this video, Family Tree Maker is just under $80. So something to think about. Remember, you don't have to have an all access membership every year. Maybe you do an all access membership for six months or for a year, and then you drop down to a lower membership for a while because you're not gonna be doing a lot of family history in that time period. That's okay too. 
be flexible, you know, kind of work with things and think about how you can work around ancestry. Now, am I pumping ancestry? Am I trying to pitch ancestry to you? I am a little bit, and I'm going to own that. And let me tell you why. If I have somebody that is just beginning their genealogy research, I think building a tree on ancestry is by far the easiest place to build a tree. It's easier even than family search, which is free, in my opinion. They all are great sites in their own way. But to me, ancestry is more user friendly and it's easier to understand and it's easier to function within. And they kick everybody else out of the water when you look at their number of records. 40 billion records, adding 15 billion more this year. That's huge. That's more than family search even. So I am a fan of ancestry. I really am. They are not paying me to say that. They allowed me to be in that beta test, but they include a lot of different people in that beta test and they cannot have me in the next one. It's just my opinion. I understand some people are frustrated with this paywall thing. I, I understand that and maybe Ancestry isn't for you. I hope that this video has given you more information about what your other options are so that you can make a decision that works for you. I referenced in this video a lot the video that I did last week that went over the Pro Tools. And if you're interested in looking at that video, you can click on that right there. You can watch that video. I hope this has been helpful. I really hope it has. I wanted to help people really make an informed decision because I think sometimes we hear this like talk and we kind of get all up in arms, but when we really look at the facts, maybe it isn't what we thought. Actually, it was for me when I really sat down and looked at the numbers. So hope this has helped and I hope you have a great day.